window out of focus it's always a problem for me all right hey friends welcome back hey it is a saturday morning uh i've been out of the game for a while work life other things um and i was just going to hop in do a little bit of testing this morning and i had this notion that hey why not take you along for the ride uh maybe i won't oh we're rearm complete excellent I just put uh, full bag, well, as much gas as I could take for this configuration. Um, so what I thought we'd do is uh, take you through just a uh, quick run-up, not with the full switchology and explanations and all that other stuff. I'm just going to get the aircraft started, bring it up to fly, and maybe talk about a couple things I'd be looking for as a tester. We know we're in a test build because at the top there, they've provided us testers with um, some various adjustable settings, et cetera, that we can manipulate and uh, things like um, import forces, trims, et cetera. So as we go through the test process and try to refine the behaviors, there's little sliders and numbers and stuff I can manipulate to try to dial in the behaviors as I remember and as I feel they're correct and to match the numbers and stuff like that. So that's what you're seeing up there. Let me go ahead and turn on my control indicator right now. All right, so you see that right there. And just I'm um, trying to anticipate what questions y'all might have. So control setup, I have uh, uh, VKB Mark IV rudder pedals, a Verpal CM3 throttle. I do not have a collective. And I use the push is up, pull is down configuration, uh, which some of you might think is a little counterintuitive. For me, it works. Um, forward, go up. Backwards, go down. Uh, when I have it in a collective configuration, my brain was turned upside down and I couldn't make it work. Um, so that's the way I use my, my throttle. Uh, I have a Verbal Constellation Alpha on a 20 centimeter 3D printed extension. The extension is uh, homemade essentially. Uh, my son made it in his high school uh, engineering lab. He, I found a, a gooseneck design, I guess on, I don't know, one of these 3D websites. Uh, gave him the design and he printed it for me and it works, been working great. So I'm on a 20 centimeter extension. As far as controls, let me see if I can't show you what I got. I don't believe I have any um, curves or anything set up. So there's my pedals right there. So currently I'm just, everything's flat, no dead zones. Look at my cyclic and uh, pitch and roll here. All right, that's roll. Everything is just zeros. You get the idea. All right. And let's see my throttle and well, that's throttle and that's collective, etc. So there you go. That's what I use for my setup. You can see my control indicator over here. There's pedal and my collective. All right. Okay, so we're sitting in a cold and dark cockpit. I'm going to go ahead and get her cranked and just talk through the real basics of the crank. Now, there are still some discrepancies, and it seems like every test build, it's two steps forward and one step back, so certain button behaviors and things sometimes change. It's either from an ED patch or, I don't know, errors creep into the various builds. Who knows? But regardless, I'll call out if there, if there are discrepancies or things that I note. Um, one of which being the hydraulic system switch right here. Normally, uh, even in a cold cockpit, this would be on. You never really turn this off. It's always just on. Uh, for some reason, even though it used to be on in previous builds, now it's off and I can't actually flip it off. And I've discovered that I can only turn it back on when power is applied. So there's been some logic applied um, within one of the builds. Um, and that's noted. We'll get that fixed. But at any rate, uh, let's go through a quick start here. All right, so I'm going to do a quick check of my circuit breakers. And as I move forward, what I need is ignition to provide spark. And then I need power to my FADEC. So I'm going to go ahead and flip those circuit breakers forward. I can turn my anti-collision light on for the start. I'm going to leave my battery off for now. And then I'll just do a quick check of the panel here. Everything looks normal. If you want to know more about all the switches, buttons, and dials, go look at my three or four hours worth of detailed talk through a cold cockpit. Uh, but today is not that. 
All right, then, dummy checks prior to the start. So I'm going to make sure my key is in and on. Currently, my throttle, I want it all the way down off past the idle detent. So if I roll it forward right now, and I'm trying to bring my throttle all the way back, but it will not close again until I press this idle detent, and then it flips back so that I can roll my throttle back. And by the way, I have my throttle currently on my flap lever on my... Uh, on my analog axis on my my throttle quadrant. So that's what I use for the throttle right now. It works All right, and then the last thing uh, I'm going to verify that my circuit breakers are in fact on which we already did so key Throttle and circuit breakers then I'm going to flip the battery on whoops All right, you hear the little click as the uh, battery relays close next thing that I'm is going to happen in about 15 seconds as the audio system runs through a bit of built-in test we're going to hear the low rotor audio then I'm just going to act that off on with my acknowledge switch here so there's the audio I'm going to do one click of the acknowledge switch to act off the audio and my remaining caution and warnings remain on the screen and I can run through those so each page you notice I have 13 cautions and three advisories that are available so all these are normal indications and I can page through each one with an additional press of the act switch and then I get to the last page and that acknowledges all of them and if I want to recall that I just go to recall and it brings up that first page again all right I do note that I have 24 volts which is above the minimum 20 required for the start and right here I'm gonna look at my clock and I've already noted we're gonna change the contrast on this so it's a little bit easier to see I'm gonna put my mode on stopwatch so I have zeros across there when I'm ready to start I'm gonna start my my start timer and at five I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit uh, hit the start switch so to prepare for the start I'm gonna set my throttle at idle that tells FADEC that I'm gonna initiate a start sequence I now have one minute to hit that start switch otherwise FADEC times it out as a safety precaution so now I'm gonna hit this start stop timer count a few more seconds and 1000 2000 and release all right, I see NG is on the rise. I got to have a minimum of 14 volts by 10% NG, which we do. We got 17 volts in holding. There's light off at 11%. TGT is on the rise by 18% NG. And I look over at pressures and temperatures moving by 20%. And I got to have blades turning by 25% NG, all of which is happening right now. I have my initial and secondary peak on the TGT. Now it's stabilized and coming back down. The next thing I'm looking for is for my start volts to drop to zero or near zero at 55% NG, which indicates that the FADEC has released the starter and the starter is off and we have a self-sustaining fire. So you saw that my start volts dropped to zero. And now I'm waiting for the engine to stabilize between 63 and 65 NG, which we have. TGT is stable. Looks like a good start. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is immediately go up to my... DC gen and I keep hitting the switch the wrong way all right DC gen AC gen essential bus my fuel boost I can put my IFF circuit breakers up and my particle circuit my particle separator circuit breaker in I don't care about these things right now I'm not going to talk about them we'll just leave them as is they don't matter currently and I note on my start I'm at a minute 30 I used probably 20 seconds to talk about the other stuff I was just talking about. So our start so took about, eh, I don't know, about a minute or so. Okay, now I'm just going to reset this guy. Notice I still have AC gen, pitch roll, disengage, rectifier, and a bunch of other stuff. I can now turn on my hydraulic system switch, which I couldn't do before. And I need hydraulic power to turn on my SCAS power. So I'm going to turn my SCAS panel power on turn on the pitch roll channel and the yaw channel that initializes my SCAS I still have AC gen and rectifier fail because I'm not at hundred percent RPMs uh, or I'm below 91 percent actually which the AC generator cuts off there so I'm gonna go ahead and open that throttle and you'll notice that AC gen and rectifier fail will disappear as I open the throttle <clears throat> notice my RPM starting to come up so my NP rises which drags the loader rotor along with it my ng is rising that was 
uh, standard caution that comes up as I transition through various RPM ranges. Notice my AC Gen and Rectifier caution messages went away. Now my, my board is clean. I'm going to set my MPD selector here to my NR and NP speeds. Okay, and this is the instrument I use to set my rotor RPM. So right here I have, I'm in between 97 and 100, which I want 100 uh, before I go fly. So to set my NR, I'm going to go ahead and beep my MP trimmer. One, two, three beeps. Now I have my NR and MP set at 100. I verify that I have one chiclet illuminated, one amber chiclet. That's what I want. That's indicating I'm at least at somewhere between 100 and 100.9. Also notice my throttle position is 100 here. My RPMs are 101. That is normal. That's exactly as it should be. Don't ask me why. That's a software thing in the actual aircraft, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Obviously, we no longer have a ro low rotor condition, so this is an error. I need to note that, so this has crept into the build somehow. That flag is not going away. I believe I can act it off. Yeah, I acted it a couple times, hit the switch a couple times, and it went away. All right, now I'm going to use my HOTAS. I'm going to select my VSD. We're already nav aligned, so everything's looking good. So I'm essentially ready to go fly. I'm going to go ahead and arm up my ACP on the ground while we're here. Not standard practice, but that way I don't have to flip the buttons later. Uh, so we have an armed indication here. And we need to have a safe arm indication um, on the ground for the weapon status. So that's another one I need to put in the bug sheet to implement. All right, well, we're ready to go fly. I'm going to turn off my force trim just to go through that button press, although force trim is not like, uh, for instance, the Apache where there's hold modes, etc. There's no such thing as a hold mode in the, in the uh, Kiowa except for heading hold. We're not going to get into that today, but uh, this force trim makes no difference on the feel or the reaction of the helicopter in flight. So whether you fly with it on or off, if you have a spring-centered joystick, there's no difference in how it flies. All right, um, It will do something similar to like the Apache or the Huey where you can set a trimmed position and then release. I'm not even going to bother with that today, but there's no difference in uh, control forces, reactions, or anything when you have force trim on or off. Okay. All right, let's check my fuel just before takeoff. So we have 500 pounds of fuel. And with that, seven rockets and, <coughs> pardon me, 300 rocks, uh, um, 300 rounds of 50 cal, that put us right at around 5,200 pounds, which is the max gross takeoff weight. So with that, I expect my torque to hover in ground effect to be about mm, 72, 73%, somewhere around there. All right, so as I bring the collective in, notice my collective's coming in. We get a little bit of movement. I'm starting to think about using my pedals. All right, and I'm, I know we're going to hang uh, left and aft skid low, so I'm going to start compensating for that. I want the toes of my skids to come up first. Notice we're starting to move a little, so I'm starting to put a little bit of input in. All right, and we should be starting to come off the ground and get light at about 55%. There it is right there, and as I'm talking through here, I'm a little bit wobbly. Normally, I wouldn't go this slow. Yeehaw. All right, and there's establishing a three-foot hover at around 71 72 percent so that's about what i would expect all right so the uh, test environment i have here has no wind so it really doesn't matter what direction we take off in what i want to demonstrate here is a minimum power takeoff so at in ground effect hover power without touching the collective anymore and notice uh, my control position is a little bit left and aft because we hover about eight to nine degrees nose high, which if you look at my VSI right there, or my uh, VSD rather, um, we're at about six to seven. So there's variability in each of the different uh, CG configurations. So this is about what, I, what I'd expect. Uh, I'm gonna do a minimum power takeoff, which is just using 
the power required to maintain a in-ground effect hover. I'm going to transition forward. What I'd be looking for here is a small drop in uh, my altitude, my radar altitude. You notice we went to about one foot as I transition slowly forward. I still have not touched my collective. My hand is in my lap. Torque has dropped off a little bit, so we're starting to approach ETL there. Now watch my control indicator as I'm pushing through ETL. I'm starting to get that blowback and right roll effect for transverse flow. So as I'm transitioning forward, now I'm getting more efficient. I'm in the upper range of ETL there, and my controls have transitioned forward and left, and now everything's stabilizing as I... Uh, am in forward flight and well past the ETL range, keeping the aircraft in trim. And I'll just uh, set up about a 500 foot per minute rate of climb here. Notice my torque fell off about mm, 4 to 5%. Uh, I still have not touched the collective. My hand is still in my lap. I've made no power adjustments whatsoever. And this is uh, w about what I expect as I got more efficient, less power to fly. So now I can put put back in that hover power there and hold a 60 knot attitude which is about wings level and I should get around 500 foot per minute rate of climb at around 60 to 70 knots so as I'm climbing away holding my attitude there yep everything looks good so getting about 500 foot per minute rate of climb in my 60 knot attitude so this is about what I'd expect, so I'm pretty happy with this, uh, the way this is tuned for this weight, etc. All right, so I'm going to clear myself to, well, let's go to the left. I'm going to clear myself to the left, come around to the left, level off my flight path. Notice as I bring my, my vertical speed to zero and I hold the same power. Notice my power is still the same. My hand is still in my lap. I haven't touched my collective yet. As I hold my, uh, as I level off and keep the same power setting, it stands that I'm going to get faster. I'm no longer climbing. So there I am transitioning from 60 to 70-ish knots at 70 to 75 percent. I should, I'd expect to get about 75, 80 knots out of this. So let's see where we stabilize. Yep, right around, right around in there. Okay, 500 feet AGL. Looking good. All right, I'm going to feed in a little bit more power. Notice my keeping the aircraft in trim. I'm having, having to add a little bit more left pedal. My cyclic is well forward. And at 80 to 85% here, let's call it 85%. I would expect I'd get around 90, 93 knots or so. My vertical fin is now offloading much of my tail rotor requirement, so you see my pedals are closer to neutral. There's that 90 knots coming, and I'm having to apply forward and right cyclic now. And there's my 85% around 90 knots. Seems reasonable to me. All right, coming around left, clearing myself, trying to keep that VSI needle level and not climb or descend in the turn. Looking at my trim as I turn, keeping the aircraft in trim, not doing a very good job of stabilized flight here. You see my airspeed drop off a little bit as I go through the turn. Now let's shoot at a couple targets. So the targets that I'm looking at are uh, those two in the center of the sod there between the taxiway and the runway. So I'm going to line up on those. So I'm already at altitude. Now you notice I have my grease pencil mark in front of me there. That's the default position. I haven't moved it. I'm going to use the circle of action technique. I'm going to action my weapon. So I'm going to use my uh, HOTAS to go to my right station weapons page and I'm going to line up on that target. I have too much torque. I'm going to set for cruise torque. So I'm going to bring that down. So target, torque, trim, target. My circle of action is where I would fly to 
if uh, I did nothing with the flight controls. I'm at 107 knots and notice I'm having to put in a lot more forward cyclic. I'm way faster than I want to be. I'm going to come off this target dry. Just wanted to demonstrate what the circle of action is. So once again, the circle of action is that point on the ground that is not moving as you're flying towards it. And it's the point on the ground that you would hit if you didn't do anything with the flight controls, provided your torque trim and all your other flight settings are correct. So at 75%, we'll call that cruise torque. I'm not going to touch my collective as I do this maneuver. So this will be a climbing right-hand turn with cyclic, leaving power alone. I'm going to stabilize at the top, reorienting on the target in the opposite direction, and then we'll see if we can't line up with the circle of action technique. All right, climbing through that turn, bleeding off my airspeed, 45 knots, really don't want to get any slower than that. And I'm going to line up on that fur that furthest little vehicle right there and let's see shoot a rocket right there all right so that circle of action worked pretty well I didn't even look at my grease pencil mark so that'll be interesting to see where it was uh, when I look at the replay and we'll go for this little set of three targets right here torque target trim target and firing that's low and transitioning to gun and breaking away it looks like I had effects there but nothing's burning now I pressed into that target a little bit too far poor tactics shouldn't be overflying the target at all breaking off at 70 knots and I was maybe 200 meters from it I'll come in for a re-attack and I'll use a little bump engagement here. So I'm going to mask myself using terrain to obscure my approach to the target and come in from another direction. So I'm going to ensure that my rockets are reselected. I know where my target is well off to the left. I'm going to use this break in the trees to get me lined up on the target. Man, my VR performance is really terrible. All right, I'm gonna unmask, look for those targets. There they are in front of me. I'm gonna do my cyclic climb. I started off a little bit slow. There's 40 knots. Gonna re-engage here. All right, target, torque, trim, and target. Firing now. And transition to gun. and breaking away. Now I'm sure many of you are wondering about the sounds and the etc. So uh, all of those are essentially placeholders so all that refinement will be happening as the model is matured. But uh, I thought y'all might enjoy a little sneak peek into the test process. I talked through some of the things I'm looking for. Uh, let me just go Winchester here. So come back around on those targets to my left there. Now I'm going to increase the power just a little bit. I've got the wires in sight. I'll turn inside the wires, come back around on a left break, cyclic climb, and then orient on the targets. Reselecting rockets. My targets are in sight. Rolling on them getting my circle of action. My power is a little bit high. And breaking away. A little bit of mushing there at the bottom as my tail was tucking under. A little bit too much aft cyclic as I was breaking off that target. And last, let's finish up with a, uh, I'll do a terrain flight deceleration uh, in front of these trees up here just to demonstrate the uh, flight model characteristics as I bring it to a hover from forward flight. So starting at 80 knots, I intend to stop in front of those trees. So as I bring the nose up, I'm reducing my power. So notice my torque is about 26%. And as I slow down, I'm feeling for ETL. I'm feeding that power in, feeding that power in. I fell through at the bottom there just a little bit, but I want to 
reestablish my hover power prior to approaching five to zero knots airspeed. So that wasn't the greatest execution there. So let me try that one more time. Uh, I'm in the multi-thread, by the way, and my uh, I have an AMD card. I have the Mac Daddy AMD card, and it was very disappointing in terms of VR performance. Kind of regretting my decision. Hopefully, they fix the drivers in the future because um, it's not great. All right, reducing that power. So bringing in at 20-ish and lower percent and letting that nose, constantly trading my attitude for airspeed here. And as I slow down, I'm bringing that power back in slowly, smoothly, and progressively. And I establish myself at a hover. All right, let's land this puppy. Woohoo! Frame rates are killing me. I gotta back up a little bit. That was a little bit too froggy. So coming in, looks like I'm at about eight feet or so. I'm gonna back her up. And look down and commit to that landing. That was a nice uh, 10 hour flight school landing there. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we're continuing progress on the module. Don't lose hope. See ya.